All right, welcome back. Today, we're in this video, we're going to um, go ahead and add in our kill volume so that um, we kind of have a way of managing where our player goes. If they fall off of something, they fall out of the world, uh, they go into some place you don't want them to go and you think it's uh, more than just a block, but you want to actually punish the player and have them restart, that's kind of what this is going to be about. Uh, there are different methods of controlling player movement and um, moving the player along through the game and sometimes um, those may be blocking barriers and sometimes those may be uh, kill triggers which cause them to have to restart. And um, you as the game designer need to decide the severity of what you need to have the player do to shape them and push them in the direction you want them to go for the game, uh, especially in a game that they're moving through something like an obstacle game. So that's what we're going to approach here. Um, again, um, if you're just joining me for the first time, you can catch the rest of this series on Putting on the Fritz 3D Visualization. Uh, you can subscribe to it and get caught up on all the videos. All right, so let's go ahead and get moving here. All right, um, so that'll look something like this. So if I bring in my demo game that we've been, I've been putting some of these things together. We've seen this before. If I run into that fire right there, Boom, I'll fade out and then fade back in because that was a severe enough uh, infringement of the rules that I had to restart. So we're gonna go ahead and create that trigger volume. It's actually a two parts to it. There is the trigger volume itself and then there is having to create the, um, the blueprint for the reset inside of the player blueprint. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my content drawer here and we're going to um, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and right click on here and I'm gonna create a new folder new folder there we go and we're gonna call this one triggers okay and then we're gonna double click this one and inside of triggers I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna create a new blueprint class okay and this blueprint class is going to be an actor. And I'm going to call this BP for blueprint underscore. And I'm going to call this boundary. Actually, I'm going to use some other boundaries. So let's be a little bit more clear about what this one is. This is going to be a, a kill boundary. Okay. So we're going to call this one a kill boundary. Uh, we could call it a kill trigger or something like that. But I think I want to be clear that this is uh, meant to be kind of a boundary, something that's going to reset the game. All right, so now with that created, we're going to double click on it and it's going to open up into this big window. I'm going to just grab the tab, stick it up here along with my other tabs so that I can just kind of bounce back and forth. All right, and then um, what I'm going to do here is going to go in and we're going to create that... Uh, trigger box and basically what we're going to do is right up here we're going to hit add and this is going to be a um, collider actually so it's going to be a box collider so box or collision either one which gets you there and we're just going to create this box okay and um, we have our box extent shapes here so we can make it bigger or smaller right here with these different uh, extents okay and I'm going to reset all those back to the original default for 32 for all of them. Because right in here, I'm not actually interested in shaping it. This is just where I'm going to start creating everything. When I put it into the game, I can decide how big and the area of, that it needs to cover. And we'll go over that in a minute. With the box selected right here, let's go ahead and rename this for one thing. Um, so I'm going to rename it. And we're going to call this trigger box. Or... Um, you know what, instead of trigger, let's call this um, kill boundary. Okay. And I'm going to scroll down over here on the right-hand side because inside of the details for this particular collider and many things that we add into the blueprints like this, there will be a bunch of events that are already preset that we can use. Okay. And right here, instead of having to go into the event graph and finding it, which we can do, what we could do is we can go through and look at the different options we have and say, yeah, I want this one, the on component begin overlap. So basically when this component overlaps with another component, our player, something will happen. So I'm going to hit the plus button and automatically it's going to take us to the event graph and it's going to give us this um, 
component here is already named it for us as well okay so now um, this one's gonna be pretty simple we're just gonna call this apply damage okay and what this means is anytime there is damage that's gonna be caused something will happen so anytime there's this overlap rather anytime there's an overlap damage will happen and we can determine how much damage we want and we can also determine who is going to be with so it's going to be an other actor and it's going to be damaged actor okay so we're going to combine those two together and we need to put a number in here okay to make this actually work if we leave it at zero nothing will happen we can put it at a hundred we can put it at one but basically the way we're going to write this next blueprint is any time that this particular um, component is overlapped with it will do a hundred percent damage to the player and cause the scene to restart so we've got this set up let's go ahead and compile it and we're going to save it okay now we're going to jump over to the player so make sure you've got your bp player open if you don't remember it's down here in your blueprints under pawns your bp player okay so down here underneath the stopping i'm going to put the uh on damage uh, event, okay? And this is gonna be a restart event. So um, we're gonna go ahead and I don't think this is one of those. Nope, it's not. All right, so we're gonna right click and we're going to type in event any, okay? And so event any is gonna bring up event any damage. This is what we want, all right? And if we take a look at the kill boundary real quick, okay? It's a box. So conceivably, depending on how big you set it up, our player may have time to actually enter one side and exit out the other side before this blueprint fully takes effect. So we don't want that to happen. We want it to, once we hit, this blueprint will happen only one time. We don't want it to happen two, three, four times based on whether the player goes in and out, in and out, in and out before the, the blueprint actually fully uh, gets to execute. So we don't want to have that happen. We only want it to happen one time. So we're going to pull out of here and we're going to say do once. Okay. We're going to type in a do once, which means once the player um, breaks that barrier into that trigger, this do it just this one time. Don't do it again. All right. Now we've already done this once, so we're going to do it again. Um, we're going to right click and get player camera manager okay right here we're gonna pull out from here and we're gonna get that camera fade again start camera fade <coughs> we're gonna connect these up now we've already created the duration fade and we may want to go back in because remember we bumped it all the way up to 10 to kind of make it uh, happen we may want to change this down to something like um, I'm going to put it down at three for right now. Okay, so now that we have the uh, duration adjusted, we're going to go ahead and pull it out, and we're going to get. We're going to plug this in to our duration here. Okay. And we're going to go from zero to one on our alpha. So we're going to go from transparent so we can see the game, and we're going to make it now solid. Okay. This is what's going to feed back in to our camera up here, okay? And, yeah. Okay. So here, so here we're going from solid to transparent, okay? And the other thing we want to do is we want to hold this when finished. We want it to um, go to, to solid so that when we restart at the very beginning, it's going to go from solid too transparent okay that makes sense now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a delay okay we're going to kind of have a delay happen so we're going to pull out from here and we're going to type in delay there it is right there Oops. maybe not there you are delay okay and <clears throat> we're going to use the same delay right here for this duration fade right here If you double click anywhere on the line, you can get this little node that allows you to kind of put in these little branches and curves and such. Okay. 
then we're going to get the current level name. So from here, we're going to go from delay, pulled out. We're going to get current level name. This is a default function. We don't have to create this. And we're going to want to return that. So it has a return value. And we'll add that in in just a second. We're going to pull out from here. We're going to get open level by name. Okay. And then we're going to return that. Okay. And we're going to get this uh, return value is going to be converted to a string. And it's going to open that up for us. All right. So now let's go ahead and highlight everything. And we're going to hit C to comment it. And I'm going to name this one. It's like my comment closed on me. That's okay. I'll put it up there. We'll name this one Restart Level. Hopefully I can type right. Okay. So Restart Level. There we go. And I'm going to leave this one gray as well because we're restarting a level. Okay. So I think we got everything. We're going to go ahead and compile it and save it. Okay. Double check to make sure we got everything connected. We do. All right. So now I'm going to go back into my level here. And somewhere I am going to go ahead and go to my content drawer. Now, this is going to be transparent. We're not going to see it, okay, um, once we start playing. So we won't know where it is. So in order to test it, we're going to need something to help us test it. So if we go up to our content level, so I click on the content right here. We do have the starter content, and we can go in there and find it. But if you have a lot, a lot of stuff that you want to go through, and you're not sure where it's at, you can type here in the content search bar, and we can type in something like fire, okay? And I want this particle fire. So I'm going to pull this up in here and just kind of set it there. Hit F on my keyboard to zoom in on it, make sure it's set up the way I want it. Okay, and then with that in the scene, I'm going to go back to my content drawer. I'm going to get rid of that fire search content. I'm going to double click on my blueprint, blueprint folders, my triggers. I'm going to pull that kill uh, boundary in and I'm going to set it up in here. And it may not be big enough for what I want it to be. So um, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and scale it. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm going to hit R on my keyboard and we'll just pull it a little bit bigger, a little bit taller. I mean, once I run into it, we should be good, but it's a little bit bigger. Set it up something like that. Okay, so let's go ahead and test this out, make sure it works. I'm going to hit play. I'm going to go towards that fire. And it should fade out and fade back in and restart the game. All right, so it looks like we have success. Um, if you have any questions, again, make sure you uh, post them in the comments. I will be more than happy to pop in and answer them whenever I can. Uh, and we're going to be doing this in my class this next week. So if there's anything that pops up again, kind of like with the uh, previous videos, um, I will make a correction to them and we can get those added in there as well. So um, if you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel and uh, I'll see you all next time.